Congratulations. It's a girl. Hey everybody, I'm Tara Wellman and you're watching Bird Seeds. We made it to 10 episodes. How cool is that? You know what's also cool? Trevor Rosenthal and family welcoming a new baby girl. Let me tell you, it is baby season. Babies are being born all around me and it is awesome. So imagine my surprise when Twitter told me this week that Cardinals fans were upset. Oh no, no outraged by the fact that Trevor Rosenthal took three days off to go be with his wife and new baby. For real? Apparently all of this nonsense started with some writer whom I will not mention by name as he's already been given entirely too much attention, who claimed that baseball players leaving a pennant race for the birth of a child is simply part of the wussification of America. I'm uh, come again? Also had someone respond with, it's not like it's his first one. C what? I did learn one thing. I now fully understand what it means when someone says, I literally can't even. Here's the deal. First of all, I realize I'm not a parent, so I can't speak based on personal experience per se, but I feel pretty confident in saying that a child outweighs a baseball game any day. All day, every day, period, end of argument. Okay? But if you insist on having this argument, you better come at me with more than A, it's not like it's his first one as if somehow that matters, or B, baseball players have missed important family events for decades. Why should today's players be any different? Because we should definitely never change bad protocol when we discover that it's bad. But really, just back up and revisit point one before even entering this absurd debate. But if for whatever reason you don't want to take my word for it, I will leave you in the very capable hands of Brian Stoll, who wrote a great piece about a ridiculous subject matter. And he said this, Things have changed for the better. Instead of being bitter, try being happy that someone else doesn't have to miss what you did. Just because you walked uphill both ways to school in 12 feet of snow, do you want your family to do so? and this is my favorite line, the Cardinals have instead pulled out a snowblower and told their teammate, no worries, we got this. Rosie, go enjoy that baby girl. The pennant race will still be here when you get back. Now that that's out of the way, let's get back to actual baseball. Remember that worrisome West Coast swing that tends to throw a wrench in things? How does seven and three sound? Pretty good considering the way the trip started. Those Padres are annoyingly tough against the Cardinals this year. The Diamondbacks were blazing hot and then the Cardinals swept them in the four game set because, you know, baseball. And the Giants, while they tested the Cardinals pitching, the bats, yes, you heard that right, kept the birds in it all week. With so many guys getting hurt this year, it's been all about somebody new stepping up every time there was a need, and this trip was no different. Steven Piscotty continued his extraordinary run, hitting 417 with two doubles, a triple, and five RBI in the last seven days. Yadier Molina had a couple of huge moments, classic Yadi, with eight hits, two doubles, and nine runs batted in. And then, of course, Matt Carpenter doing Matt Carpenter things. He clinched his first 20 home run season and also became the first Cardinal to eclipse that mark. Then there was Tommy Pham, who just keeps creating runs, and Jason Hayward continues to impress. Even Brandon Moss got in on the fun, hit a couple of home runs of his own. It's about time, and things are looking up, my friends. Things are looking up. Unless, of course, you're Pete Cosmo or Peter Borges, because, you know, when you're the backup and you get leapfrogged by a Memphis player when the guy playing in front of you gets hurt, I, that can't be good. I mean, I love both of them, but why aren't they there? 
at this point. But I digress. It is time for the Cardinals to come on home, and in doing so, they will face the Washington Nationals for three. The Washington Nationals that are in a bit of a tailspin right now. They're 12 and 16 in August, heading into the series at Bush. But don't let that fool you. They do still have some tough pitching. The Cardinals in this series will face Gonzalez, Ross, and Scherzer. No cakewalk, to be sure. You'd like to think the Cardinals, though, could take advantage of the trouble that the Nationals have been having, especially considering the next series at Bush against none other than those pesky Pittsburgh Pirates who just refuse to ever lose a game. Again, ever, or so it seems. Not to be overly dramatic or anything, but this series kind of feels like the season's on the line, at least to some extent. They have three more with the Pirates after this series, so it's not over until it's over. But with the Pirates continuing to beat other teams, this is the Cardinals' best chance in a head-to-head -head matchup to gain a couple of games on the Pirates, but it's also the Pirates' best chance to try to overtake the Cardinals. So no pressure, guys, but um, you're gonna need to bring your A-game. The good news is reinforcements are coming in multiple forms. Guys getting healthy, as well as September call-ups. Now, a lot of you have asked me on Twitter this week who I thought some of those call-ups might be. And the truth is, we're probably not gonna be too surprised by the names that we see this September, simply because with all of those injuries, the road between Memphis and St. Louis has been pretty well worn this year. So starting with the pitching, I expect we'll see a lot of familiar names. Tyler Lyons, uh, Miguel Sokolovich, Mitch Harris, Tim Cooney, if he's healthy, although he's been on the DL, so his status is kind of up in the air. And we may get a look at Marco Gonzalez, who's been dealing with some health issues, but we all remember what he did in the postseason last year. So having that back up down the stretch would certainly not hurt. As for anyone else, I would look at a guy like Cody Stanley to get another shot. He's got seven home runs on the air. A little bit of pop off the bench is never a bad thing, especially for this team. And then Xavier Scruggs. Again, those two guys have been in St. Louis already this season at times, and you would expect them to get another look. Greg Garcia would be on that list, except that he's already with the team. Same thing with Tommy Pham. So as for anyone else, the picture is a little more muddy because a lot of the guys that you would kind of think of aren't on the 40-man roster. And not only are they not on the 40-man, but look at a guy like Matt Adams, who was on the 60-day DL and will have to be placed back on the 40-man when he's able to return. So the spots are limited, but there's some wiggle room. There's some gymnastics that can happen to kind of reshape that 40-man if necessary. Dean Anna is a shortstop on the 40-man right now. He's not had a great season, but in the last 10 or 12 games, he's kind of turned it up a notch. So has Alemis Diaz, who is an interesting story because he was actually DFA'd earlier this year and cleared waivers, and after that, he suddenly turned his season around as well. Not on the 40-man. Another guy that's not on the 40-man roster that I would love to see get a chance in September is Jacob Wilson. He's a second baseman, third baseman. He's got 11 home runs on the year. He, I've watched him play since he was in, in low A ball, and he's just a very exciting player to watch. Maybe a bit of a long shot because I don't know that he's going to add the, the boost that the Cardinals need as much as a September call-up would be experience for him going forward. And in a tight pennant race, I'm not sure where they're going to go with that whole experience thing. So keep an eye on Jacob Wilson. Maybe not this September, but a name to remember for sure. You may notice I didn't have any outfielders on that list, and that kind of explains itself when you look at some of the guys hopefully coming back from rehab assignments. Matt Holliday, John Jay, and Randall Gritchick, which then leaves Tommy Pham and Stephen Piscotti maybe a little bit more outside of the outfield picture, but certainly no shortage of depth there when those players come back. Speaking of, John Jay at a rehab assignment this weekend. Matt Adams supposed to be headed for a rehab assignment of his own. Holiday seemingly making progress and Gritchick, well, we haven't heard a whole lot of news about that elbow situation, which kind of concerns me, but theoretically he'll be back mid-September as well. Suffice it to say, a lot could change for the Cardinals in the next 
seven to ten days. So buckle up, Cards fans, because this roller coaster is just getting started. And after another wild ride of a week, we'll be back to talk about it next time on Bird Seeds. Oh, hey, one more thing. If you like what you just spent all that time watching, if you want to do me a favor and click the little like button somewhere in this general area below, and if you missed an episode, go ahead and click up here and you can see everything that you might have missed.